Since we're on the topic of trust, there's something I think has to be voiced now. At this point, we can't deny it anymore, can we? There's a traitor at this school. Hello everybody, and as you were saying, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Today we are going to be talking about My Hero Academia. Specifically, why I think the second best girl in the series, Toru, is the traitor. The first thing to establish is that Toru's quirk runs in her family. In one of the bonus chapters of My Hero Academia, we see a picture of Toru with her mother and father, who are both invisible. With an invisibility quirk, it would be very easy for Toru to find on teachers and gather information while in the school without being seen. But she's also the perfect person to infiltrate the school because her quirk cannot be turned off. She has what is known as a mutant quirk or a mutation quirk. And people with mutant quirks have a special advantage over people that do not have mutant quirks when it comes to infiltrating UA. And that is the fact that they are immune to eraser head or Aizawa's eraser ability. Aizawa is unable to turn off the quirk of people that had mutant quirk. For example, if he was to mutate quirk on say Tokuyami, his crow head would not disappear because his crow head is part of him. And Toru quirk is a mutant type and we have also seen that her parents are also always invisible as seen when we saw a photo of their family, meaning that the quirk can most certainly not be turned off. This means that Toru, unlike characters like Zero who would have to worry about having their quirk turned off while by or trying to gather information, would be able to go about her day without worry as Aizawa could never turn off her quirk. As long as she took off her clothes and didn't allow anybody to touch her, Toru would be able to travel throughout New Way undetected whenever she desired. But moving on from that, I'd also like to take a look at her bedroom, which is quite strange when you actually think about it. All the other girls have bedrooms that are unique and stand out drastically from each other. They also tie into what we know about the characters. All the girl is death for Toru. Toru's room is the most stereotypical teenage girl's room you could ever imagine. It's almost what you would imagine somebody making a teenage girl's room look like if they were trying to make it look as stereotypical as possible. It's also worth noting that the stuffed animal on her bed has a borderline creepy sister smile on his face. But overall, the room is so stereotypical it looked like she was trying to make it look as normal and stereotypical as possible. It doesn't stand out at all, something that she would want if she would betray her. Also, if you take a look at Toru's initial character design, her mask has a borderline sadistic, creepy smile on it. The mask does not look like the mask of a hero. In fact, it almost reminds me of the Joker from DC Comics. It's really unsettling to look at. But above all else, there is one thing I noticed when looking back on the series so far that was very strange. In both the USJ attack and the training camp incident, Toru did not engage in combat with a single one of the villains. In fact, she was there when the Vanguard action squad attacked during the training camp arc, but she did absolutely nothing. She didn't even attempt to do anything. And obviously, if Toru was betrayed her, she would want to give the League of Villains as little trouble as possible so they could focus on their goal of capturing Bakugo. And in the USJ incident, nobody even knew where she was. She later revealed that she was with Toradoki the whole time, but he didn't even know she was there. Why would she not make her presence known and help Toradoki in whatever way she could, unless she wanted him, the son of the number two hero Endeavor, to get hurt or possibly killed? Toradoki is incredibly powerful and the son of the number two hero. Even if the goal of the USJ attack was to lure out All Might and take him down and not kill Toradoki, if he was to die in the crossfire, that would be very beneficial to the League of Villains. But due to all the evidence I have compiled in this video, I believe Toru is the traitor. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I want to thank Teching101 for hosting this contest. I had a lot of fun making this video, so thank you for providing me with that opportunity. And guys, tell me who you think the traitor is in the comment section down below. Subscribe for more videos if you're new. And below, guys, have a great day.